Welcome to October's social media update from Avocado Social. My name is Alison, so I may have met some of you before, but if not, then this is who I am. I've been working in the social media industry for 14 years now. Um, I started my career working at big digital marketing agencies, and now I've been running Avocado Social for 10 years next year. So it will be our 10 year anniversary and we've worked with a really wide range of brands. You can see just a few of the big names there on the screen, but we do work with a lot of small businesses, growing startups, also organizations, charities, um, yeah, all kinds of people, to be honest. So <laughs> you name it, we've probably worked in that industry. So here are the key updates for October 2023. These are the 10 topics I'm going to be talking about today. So I won't go into too much detail at this point, but I will just say to you, it is always such a challenge just to pick which ones I'm going to discuss every month. There are a few I've left out this month um, that I thought could have an honorable mention as well. So if you are using WhatsApp for business, which I know some of you are, particularly if you're using it to update clients or even run some sort of collaborative community, then WhatsApp now allows you to switch users within the app. So it's brilliant because you could one minute be your personal WhatsApp and then switch into a business WhatsApp. They don't have to be all in one page now, which is great. So I don't know about you, but sometimes I use WhatsApp for communicating with a client perhaps. And then sometimes I'm chatting with my friends and family and it can be incredibly distracting if you're trying to have a bit of time out to then be thinking with your work brain on. So it, I think it's a really good move from WhatsApp to start separating that. So you should see that rolling out within your app in the settings pretty soon. So let's get started then. If you are a regular on these updates, you'll know that I like to start with some stats. I thought this report that came out this week from Data AI on the app usage in Q3 2023 was really interesting. So, so far this year, we know that Threads has been the, the most downloaded app of the year so far and actually ever in the shortest amount of time. But you can see after that, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, um, CapCut up there as well, which is of course the TikTok editing app which is owned by TikTok. So really interesting to see that. If we look at consumer spend, which is the middle common column there, then we're looking at how much consumers are spending within the apps. How much money are people spending on things like premium uh, memberships or even on shopping on items? So TikTok, TikTok shop is incredibly successful you can sell products incredibly quickly and easily there. Um, and also, you know, that works very well with things like user generated content. If influencers are reviewing products and then linking to them, it can be incredibly engaging for somebody who then uh, goes on to purchase a product. I was quite interested by Tinder there. So I didn't realize that um, you know, you could spend money on Tinder. So I, I wasn't quite sure how they made money as an app. So I uh, Googled it. And of course, there are features like boosting your profile or having a premium profile that allows you some better functionality within the app. So really interesting to see which apps are making the most money. And then if we look at monthly active users, this one always still surprises people that Facebook is number one. So this is looking at consumers in six markets across three regions. And they are people are now spending more than five hours a day in apps. Uh, the top market by time spent on Android and iOS devices is Indonesia, who spend an incredible six hours per day on mobile apps on average. So if you think you're addicted to your phone, um, then we, are, we in the UK are certainly not um, the most active compared to the rest of the world. We're somewhere in the middle, to be honest. 
So I thought that was quite a nice report that came out this week. This data does um, exclude China. So if you are interested to know what's going on in China, this, this report isn't for you. So on to our next update, LinkedIn verification. So you're probably thinking, oh no, not another blue tick to go and chase. But this is something that is happening on LinkedIn. It has been happening for a while now. So LinkedIn have actually been offering verification to certain profiles for a while, but it looks like they're massively going to expand that capability so that you can have a verified profile on there. Let's take a step back for a second and talk about LinkedIn as a whole. I usually tend to reference this when we do discuss LinkedIn, but once again, LinkedIn have revealed that they are seeing record levels of engagement. Now, this is what they tend to say every quarter when they bring out their latest statistics. But Microsoft have just released their update for shareholders um, and they have this week reported 985 million members. So that's grown by 5 million since the last time that they revealed this data. They've also said that they've seen a big boost in engagement coming as a result of its increased implica implementation of AI. So AI is um, expanding on the platform, things like suggesting who you might connect with, suggesting messages to send to people, suggesting articles to write. So it's really helping to boost their engagement a lot. And also LinkedIn has said that expanded knowledge sharing on the platform has helped to really grow the platform. And by that, I guess they mean things like people are sharing more on their personal profiles. They're sharing a lot of um, insight via live updates, whether that's video or audio. And also we're seeing a boost in articles as well. Microsoft has said that the LinkedIn newsletter subscriptions have continued to grow. And that's why I've included this screenshot in the right hand side here. This is just how many kind of newsletters are happening within my network that I'm being invited to subscribe to at the moment. So you can see just looking back over the last two months, a real range of both businesses and individuals running newsletters. Um, and some of those you can see are weekly, some are monthly, some are bi-weekly as well, which is the most frequent you can currently do. And it's absolutely free to run a newsletter subscription. What that does is it essentially means that all of the people subscribed will get a notification and an email every time you create a new article on your profile. And you can do that from a business perspective or from personal. Both seem to be working well. Um, Microsoft has said that LinkedIn newsletter subscriptions have now exceeded more, hundred, more than 450 million signups globally. So they've grown three times compared to last year. And LinkedIn premium subscriptions have also increased 55% year over year. Now, I was investigating LinkedIn premium um, just last week on behalf of a, of a client who wanted to know what the latest pricing is, what the latest benefits are. And they've really kind of tweaked around with it lately. I noticed that, um, you know, the, the entry level premium only gives you three in-mail messages. Now, that's a lot fewer than it used to be. I believe you used to have 10 in-mail messages for free, which is where you're able to direct message somebody you're not connected to. So now it's just three. Um, it does give you expanded search and um, prices start from around like crudely 50 pounds a month. Um, but some of the most expensive premium subscriptions are, are over a hundred pounds a month. So um, it is interesting. I just a disclaimer, I currently don't pay for premium on LinkedIn and I don't actually ever really feel a need to do so from my own perspective. But of course, I work with business development teams, sales teams, recruiters, HR, who definitely need those subscription benefits. So let's talk a little bit more about the verification then. 
So you'll notice that some people are starting to have this tick next to their name on LinkedIn, which does offer verification of identity. It's currently only available for individual accounts, not business. So you would see that little tick, which is almost like in a shield next to somebody's name. And also you can see if, where they have been um, verified and who by. So LinkedIn has announced that it is now expanding its verification offering so that third party apps can verify users that they do definitely work there. So you can see in these examples, the verification third parties are clear and tax max. So I think this is that those are two US based companies. The verification process enables users to confirm their identity. They All they have to do is provide their ID. So in the UK, that would be your pass, passport. Um, that would then add the verification badge to your profile, com confirming that you are who you claim you are in the app. Now, the reason I'm flagging this one kind of early, I guess, is because I believe you know, we will reach a point across all social media where we will need to verify our, our identities with our ID because there are just so many issues with um, impersonation, hacking, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I believe that that's the way we will go. And if you can do it early, I think that will benefit you. So keep your eyes peeled for that little badge on your profile, which says verify for free, show authenticity to boost trust get verified. Now that is rolling out at the moment. And I'd imagine it's probably going to be rolling out in the US first, but just something to keep your eyes out for. Okay. Collaborative articles. So I mentioned there that people are actually creating more articles than ever before on LinkedIn, which might surprise you. I mean, I have seen mix, mixed, mixed, um, opinions about LinkedIn articles. But one of the things that's working really well for growth on LinkedIn are these collaborative articles. Now, I'm pretty new to these myself. I only discovered them in the last few weeks. So don't worry if you haven't seen them yet either. They are essentially articles which draw on users' expertise on a particular topic and offer users the opportunity to kind of throw in their opinions, almost like a forum. Um, and this is a brilliant way of creating a really engaging piece of content that people will go to LinkedIn to read. And also it's very shareable too. It is actually the platform's fastest growing traffic driver at the moment, which is interesting. People are wanting this kind of content. They first launched in March this year, and LinkedIn says that it's now facilitated over a million expert contributions via the format, making it the platform's fastest growing traffic driver. So more professionals are coming to th share their thoughts within the app. So the first update that we've had around this is they've just recently been given a very good new look. The article here looks really engaging and it gives a lot of focus on the top experts who will then, of course, be sharing this article within their networks. So this puts a big focus on user contributions. And also you can see in this example that LinkedIn now better showcases contributions at the top of the post um, and it's also updating the display format, how it displays in stream, so in the news feed as well. If you do contribute to a lot of different articles on LinkedIn, you could receive a community top voice badge, which gives you a little label on your profile, which is a nice little incentive to go for, um, which helps your profile stand out. Um, it obviously shows that it you know, you are an expert in that particular field as well. So in this example, you can see uh, brand management is H Houston Golden's um, chosen topic of choice. So if you wanted to explore collaborative articles and, and see more of them, then I'm actually just grabbing the link for you, if I can, <laughs> and popping that into chat. Um, and this is where you can kind of explore different articles that you could potentially go and contribute to. So at this stage, maybe it's just worth 
um, having a little look and seeing what's out there, seeing if there's anything relevant. And of course, considering what your strategy is as well, because you may not necessarily have an employee engagement strategy where you are positioning someone as a thought leader. Um, this is where I would normally recommend this kind of activity. If you're working on somebody in your organization's profile, maybe it's your own, maybe it's your CEO, your founder, um, one of your marketing um, leaders, or even just anyone in the leadership team, and you're looking to make their profile more engaging, more trusting, more authoritative in your field, then actually contributing to collaborative articles could be a great strategy just to get more um, visibility in the platform. I can also see just a question there about um, the reports that I was mentioning there about apps. Um, so Rachel, it was data AI. Um, I think um, Anella has answered you there as well. I will grab the link to that report and send that out with the recording as well so you can get your hands on that for free. So we're on to our next update. We've kind of bookended LinkedIn there. We'll move on to a different platform now and everyone's favorite. Let's talk a little bit about Instagram. So Instagram are going through a few updates at the moment. There's some testing going on. I think generally a lot of this testing is to see if they can increase public engagement. Um, I hear from so many people that engagement is down. Um, I'm not sure if I think that or whether it's just a case of you know the way in which we use social media is changing and evolving so often a lot of us now tend to engage in dms rather than publicly so i don't know about you but i do reply to stories on instagram in a dm to a lot of brands to individuals to friends to influencers and that's my main way of commenting on something so actually a lot of engagement is happening on Instagram, but it's happening in the DMs. And that's something that Adam Moss or I confirmed um, on a live chat a couple of months ago, which I shared on this update. So he said that actually on Instagram, they see their highest levels of engagement in DMs, which is really interesting. One of the updates that they are potentially adding, they're testing this out, I don't know if anyone's seen it, is the option to run a poll in the comments publicly. So maybe somebody is has started a discussion, perhaps um, you as a brand are seeing there's a bit of debate happening in your comments section on a post, then you can now actually, or you will soon be able to, I should say, run a poll and just see that option. Now, this is actually only just rolling out to some users as a small test, um, but uh, Mark Zuckerberg has confirmed that it will be rolling out to all users soon. So that's interesting that they are actually going to put this live pretty soon. So this could be a good opportunity to maybe start thinking, what could we be doing as a poll or how could we be creating some debate happening in the comments that we can then turn into a poll. So plotting and planning maybe around things like Christmas or New Year could be good content hooks for this. I think this is a great idea because to be honest, I do think comments have gone a little bit stale on Instagram. That is a big generalization, by the way. Obviously, there are still some really active comment threads to get involved in. But hopefully this will spark people to get a little bit more active again within that comment section. The other update, which I'm really excited about, this is a, a big one for me, is Instagram story stickers from photos. Let me explain. You can currently put stickers like this one on the bottom left-hand side of the screen. You can put GIF stickers on top of stories. You do this by adding a sticker, searching for a particular brand, an object, or maybe a meme, and then scrolling through the search and looking for stickers. These stickers are currently created by brands that would upload them to the third party GIF platform, Giphy. And you can see on the right hand side here, these are what five guys, the, the burger chain has. 
um, available. Giphy then speaks to Instagram and all of those GIFs are fed through automatically as an option on Instagram. But what Instagram is now doing, or at least testing, is the ability to actually create a sticker within the app. And it's really easy, or it's going to be really easy to do. Essentially, this new option will allow you to use a photo in your camera roll and basically cut out a section of that photo to be your sticker, like in this example of the dog in the middle there. So it's really easy to do. Um, maybe some of you have been using Apple's photo cutout option that it added in the iOS 16 update, which enables you to basically hold your finger on a photo in your camera roll, click copy, and it will isolate the subject for photo, copy that as a sticker, and you can paste it in WhatsApp or an email. I actually tried that one just last week um, with a picture of my children and, and are now using it as a sticker on WhatsApp. So it's quite a fun thing to do if you've got iOS 16 on your Apple device. But it looks like this is coming to Instagram stories. And I think this is a good one because it just suddenly makes it more of a level playing field who can have these branded gift stickers. Maybe there's some really fun ones that you could do. Um, based on your products or your team or maybe certain characters within your business. Um, perhaps you could uh, do some where, I don't know, you're, you're wearing certain uniforms or outfits, like you can see the Five Guys um, crew there, all in their Five Guys outfits. So there's a lot of scope here, but ideally these stickers are simply a great way to customize your stories, particularly if you're sharing user-generated content. So if you're sharing a customer's photo on stories, adding in your own stickers can just essentially make that feel more branded, um, make it also a little more engaging perhaps to that customer and to your audience once you do share that. So definitely a good update to keep your eyes out for there. And it should appear in your sticker options there on stories. So it wouldn't be a social media update without talking about TikTok. I'm sure some of you saw the big news this week. And I'm still kind of scratching my head about it, to be honest, because I personally just don't see it happening but TikTok has expanded the video limit once again. Out of interest, does anybody know what the new video limit will be on TikTok? Bear in mind, TikTok's started as 15 second clips. Uh, so Bryony has guessed 10 minutes. Um, so the 10 minute update happened earlier this year, Bryony, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute, but that was a very good guess. Rachel, 30 minutes. Um, feels a little extreme <laughs> but we're certainly on our way to 30 minutes uh, so the latest update from TikTok is 15 minutes so you can now upload content that's 15 minutes long to TikTok you do need to update your app first to make sure you're running the most recent option of TikTok and then you can try uploading from your app or from desktop um, I think it's pretty crazy, to be honest, um, but I have seen people um, in forums and on LinkedIn saying, actually, you know, it'd be worth a test. Uh, maybe it is something people want. Certainly this year, we've seen a lot more longer form content happening on TikTok, particularly with um, studios and streaming platforms producing more content or, or I should say, repurposing content from films onto TikTok. So the example that a lot of people talk about this year is the film Mean Girls has now been posted to TikTok in 10-minute chunks by the pr production company Paramount. And it's had m huge amounts of views, lots of people saying they, they actually watched that movie on TikTok. Um, and there's more and more examples of this, documentaries, television series, actually being uploaded in small chunks to TikTok and people are really engaging with them. So maybe it is, isn't such a crazy idea. 
The big update that happened earlier this year, I believe it was, was the 10 minute update, which is the current video limit before this big announcement happened. And the one video that a lot of people use as the example, the case study to showcase the fact that this does work was the Hilton update. If you haven't watched this 10 minute long TikTok yet, you should definitely watch it. It went completely viral. Obviously there was a lot um, a lot that went into it. So for example, it was the first 10 minute long video that had ever been published on TikTok before. There was a lot of hype for it, a lot of free PR, just because it was the first time people had done it. It had Paris Hilton in it. So having a big celeb is obviously going to be a big pull. Um, and it has amassed over 35 million views since being live on TikTok um, as of the spring this year. Um, it's had 86 times more views than the average brand video. But there were a few th other things that made it work. So they had giveaways um, within the video. They were giving away experiences, points, swag, and more. So there was lots of incentives. And if you watch that video, it does keep you engaged throughout with lots of different presenters, comedy sketches, um, dance routines and just generally Paris Hilton as well so it was a really clever way of doing it and that's led me to wonder who is going to be the first to upload a 15 minute video and will that be as popular as Hilton's so as I said if you haven't seen that video do go and watch it and I've just popped the link to an article explaining why the video went viral TikTok have also made some big announcements in terms of accessibility. So there will be an update on captions happening um, in, no in November. So a couple of next week. Yeah, next week. <laughs> November's next week. Oh, my God. So their update is every single video will now have auto generated captions um, so basically you can remove those if you want to, but by default, they will be on your video. Uh, creators can still edit or delete captions after posting and you can modify the captions authorizations toggle status for any video that's been posted before November. So if you do want to add captions historically to some of your videos, you can do. So I think that's a really important update from TikTok who are looking to improve accessibility on the app. Um, I think that's probably something a lot of other social media channels will then copy as well because it seems to be a very popular update. Um, you'll still be able to um, edit those captions as well. So if you notice that something's slightly off, you'll be able to do that. But essentially, TikTok is saying this is a positive step for accessibility for both users with hearing difficulties and for regular users that are watching TikTok with sound off and in sound off situations, which, to be honest with you, I think so many of us do. So a good one to look out for there. Now, if you are a TikTok user, you'll know that sometimes when you're editing a TikTok video, it can get a little bit... Um, annoying let's say a little bit fiddly doing all that editing on your phone particularly if you're editing a lot of videos all in one go I was um, lucky enough to speak at a conference last week with a TikTok creator and she was telling me that she will often you know spend a good few hours a day editing videos all on her phone and I was thinking gosh your your poor hands your poor thumbs like that must really ache at the end of the day so she'll be pleased, as I'm sure many of us social media marketers will be pleased to hear that the TikTok desktop editing experience is getting a whole lot better. So you can access TikTok desktop to not only browse videos, to engage with videos, watch them, like them, comment on them, but now you can also upload and edit. So you could upload before, that's not new, but editing has got a lot better and you can see here you can use templates add sounds add clips layer trim um, you can do quite a lot on desktop um, which is great I think this is you know bringing uh, making it a lot easier essentially to create engaging TikTok videos 
Um, you can also set who can watch the video, public, private. Um, you can allow users to comment you at Stitch your videos. You can schedule videos to go live as well. So you could batch upload some videos. Um, and you can see there that there are a few other options as well. So I, for one, I'm really excited about that update. While we're on TikTok, one of the questions that I get asked about from time to time is if you post a TikTok and then maybe it hasn't got great engagement or not so many video views, should you delete it? And this um, question has come up quite a bit recently. And the answer that I keep hearing consistently is no way. Don't delete anything on TikTok. If you suddenly don't want something to be private, uh, public anymore, you can set it to private so only you see it. But if you delete something, that will actually send a little bit of a warning um, to the algorithm. Um, basically, the algorithm doesn't like it if you delete stuff. So it may then alter the potential reach of future videos. And actually, again, talking to this TikTok creator who told me that sometimes videos that she's posted from months ago can almost have a bit of a second wind in the algorithm just by chance, whether that's, you know, something in it was highly searchable that week or topical or a bunch of new people have come to her profile and they've been looking at older videos. So there are ways that you can still amass lots of new views. It doesn't necessarily have to be all the views that are happening on your video are going to happen in 24 hours because that's certainly not the case with the TikTok algorithm. Okay, so it wouldn't be a social media update without talking about threads. Threads is still around. It's actually um, becoming a little bit more relevant again because two things really. The first is, I don't know if you've noticed, but across other meta platforms, Instagram, Facebook, we're now seeing big windows in the newsfeed dedicated to threads. There is a section called For You on Threads in both the Facebook feed and the Instagram feed. And it's showing you people that it thinks you're going to be interested by, whether that's based on your connections or based on the content you're viewing. And it is try basically trying to tempt you into threads by saying, look at all this great stuff that's happening on threads that you're missing out on. So <laughs> some people are saying this appears desperate from Facebook or from Meta to be using platforms like Instagram and Facebook to promote threads. But I certainly think it's uh, it's interesting the way that they are looking to kind of tie up all of their platforms and you know mention all of the platforms amongst amongst them. Um, and I do also think that potentially Threads is growing again. I've seen a few people recently um, completely quit Twitter um, or X, I should say, and move permanently to Threads as an option. And the other one to bear in mind is Threads is gearing up to launch in the EU next year. So they're currently not uh, able to operate in the EU based on strict privacy laws. Um, but this is something they really want to change. And they're working with the European uh, Commission, European Union, to um, suddenly you know, create a reason why they can either change their privacy uh, restrictions or bypass them. I'm not quite sure how they're doing it, but the the word on the street is as soon as Threads launches in the EU, it will see a huge burst in activity once again. So it is something to very much keep your eye on. And if you haven't created a profile there yet, it might be worth doing so. It really doesn't take long because you can just copy your profile from Instagram across to Threads. And then you don't necessarily have to be using it, but at least you've got a profile that people can follow. And if you do decide further down the line to activate that, then it's going to be easier for you to do so. And people won't have grabbed the username as well, which is always a worry. So more updates on threads, I'm sure, coming next month. And the final update I have today is about X. Um, and as always, this is a constant discussion happening across our consultancy clients. A lot of people are really keeping an eye on those numbers, trying to determine whether it's worth still being on X. 
Actually, one of the things that has happened this week is X has decided to launch two new premium tiers. Now, it's unclear whether these tiers will replace the current paid subscription tier, which is called, used to be called Blue, then they turned it to X Premium. So it's quite hard to keep on top of what's going on. Or it could be that they're going to add a second and third tiered option to what they already have in existence. Earlier this month, Bloomberg reported that X is testing three new subscription tiers called Basic, Standard and Plus. Who knows? And according to reports, users would just see ads in their For You page on the Basic. Um, Standard would basically give you about half the amount of ads and plus users would have no ads at all. So all of these subscription models seem to be based on how many ads you see, which to be honest with you, I don't think it's a massive issue seeing ads on social media platforms. I mean, they certainly work well. Um, So I'm not sure I'd pay for a tool to remove the ads from the social media landscape. Um, We shall see. It feels to me like a little bit of a desperate attempt from Musk and his team. Um, And you can see here, he's sort of tweeted about that a few days ago, which has had, you know, 102,000 likes. Uh, But in the comments there, you know, a lot of people just saying, well, I I wouldn't pay for it. And I don't see the point in paying for it. Um, I'm interested to hear from all of you. What's going on with your ex? Um, Oh, oh, sorry. I think we have a question there. If you could use the chat, that would be great. The uh, the chat box. Um, and then everybody will be able to hear that. No problem. And I'm going to open the floor to, uh, to questions in just a second. So if you do have any questions about anything that we've spoken about so far, please do let me know. So the other thing I just wanted to mention there about X is the um the general feeling and of course this is a generalization and there will always be um anomalies to this is that your overall impressions on x seem to have plummeted um a lot of people are reporting that they're not able to reach the same amount of views that they once did on x and also that um engagement has also fallen off a cliff So I think you do need to take a look at A, how much website traffic X is able to drive your website. And secondly, how many impressions you're able to get as well. Um, So Ira, I can see there that you asked the question, my company can no longer access analytics. Oh, sorry, it it was Bryony that asked the question. Um, Is this due to the update? Yes, I'd I'd imagine it is. Um, And actually, I can see that Ira has said the same. So this is something that they're continually tweaking. What is available for people to have for free? What is available for premium? So it looks to me like, yes, they are potentially testing the fact that analytics will only be available for paying members. The other thing that Elon has threatened is that maybe if you want to use X, you have to pay. So he's now floating the idea of everybody that uses X will have to pay. And that to me is incredibly dangerous. So if you do have an existing X community and you are finding that, um, you know, you still have engagement, it's still a valuable community for you. I would seriously consider, you know, is this worth paying for? How much would we pay for it? Is it worth trying to move people over to another platform at this point? As I've said, I've seen a few people do that with threads recently. Um, So definitely worth thinking about these questions for your strategy for 2024. Um, I can see I'll I'll stick with X at the moment. And Nella has asked, has everyone changed all their branding from the Twitter logo, Twitter name to X? We still haven't changed this on our website and we need to know by Christmas. Many people are saying Elon would change the name back, but it looks like it's sticking. Really interesting question there, Nella. I actually got asked this one by a client yesterday. And so I've done the research for you. Looking at the UK specifically, a lot of the big organizations and media brands have not updated their Twitter logo yet. So that would include the BBC, Bloomberg, The Telegraph, Oxfam and Cancer Research. 
All of those I've just mentioned are still using the Twitter logo on their homepage. Now that to me says that there is still resistance over using the word X and still distrust in the fact that we are going to run with it. I do think it probably is going to stick because I don't think Elon Musk is the type of person to kind of turn around and be like, I failed. I think he'll, you know, keep going and keep saying that this is the, the new brand. Um, but I think it's going to take a while for people to integrate that into their sites. I have seen um, some social media agencies using X on their website. So if if it's possible to kind of hold off on that rebrand until Christmas, then I probably would. And then maybe just do a quick bit of research around Christmas and see whether any of the big media organizations have moved over yet. Um, or, you know, you could hit the ground running and do it, uh, but just bear in mind that it it, it might uh, not necessarily even be a link that you want to have on your website um, in the future. So very, very up in the air and lots changing as always with X. Um, some really interesting comments there. Thank you for sharing everybody. Um, Ruth says, would you recommend brands focus more on stories or posts? Well, I think it's a blend, Ruth. I think it really is because on your stories, you can certainly engage people a lot better with things like stickers, getting people to click, getting people to send you comments. But posts are brilliant for reaching potentially new people who've never heard of you before. So it should be a dual strategy. Uh, no one better than the other. I often think about it as your Instagram posts is your shop window and your stories is what's happening in store. So hopefully that's a, a good way of helping you just to think about what kind of content you should be putting on both. Um, cool. I'm just having a quick look to see if there's any other questions that I may have missed or if you do have any questions you'd like to ask me. Um, then now is the time. Um, so yes. Also, I saw there a, a question earlier about whether this um, presentation will be available afterwards. Every month we record these sessions and we put them live the following day on our YouTube channel, uh, which you can find just by searching for Avocado Social on YouTube. I'll take this moment to let you know about the upcoming updates for the rest of the year. So we've got November going ahead as usual on the 23rd. And then we also have our annual social media trends event, which is where I'm going to be forecasting what we need to know for our social media strategies in 2024. So do come along to that. Or if you can't attend in person live, of course, that update will be going on YouTube as well. And you can sign up to these events right now via our website or Eventbrite. I'll actually give you the direct link to Eventbrite now um, on the chat. Um, so I would recommend trying to grab a place early because we do have limits of 100 people per session. Um, and we don't want to disappoint anyone. So if you are interested in coming along to any more of these events, then do go ahead and book now as well. The other thing to note is that we have our free Facebook group, um, continually updating everybody on the latest social media trends. So what I tend to do is drop a few stories in there every month, some of the things that we're going to be discussing. It's also a great place to come if you're having any issues or challenges, or maybe you want to share some cool campaigns or posts that you've seen others do. Do come and be part of the Avocado Social Media Hub. As always, if you would like to ask me any questions, you can get in touch directly. There's my email address, there's my website, and there's the link to the Facebook group as well. Just so you know, we do offer ongoing monthly consultancy to a wide range of businesses, and we do have a couple of spaces coming up for 2024. So if you're looking to invigorate your social media strategy, or maybe you need support around a certain area like advertising or perhaps um, competitions, or maybe some help with your strategy generally, then we can be your dedicated social media partner. The way our consultancy works is that you uh, will receive a monthly 
support session from myself. Um, and then you're welcome to drop us, you know, questions or thoughts on upcoming campaigns and things like that between our sessions so that we can discuss them as we get together and hopefully give you plenty of insight to inspire you and expand your knowledge, saving you time and money in the long run. So do get in touch if you want to know more about our membership services. I would be happy to send you over some more details. Um, I can see there's one more question I wanted to answer before I wrap up. And that is a question that has come through. Sorry, my chat has just updated. So I need to scroll down and I've currently lost my mouse. Always things like this happening. And the question was from Vicky. So Vicky, are any of your clients utilizing WhatsApp channels? So I do have a couple of clients using WhatsApp channels actually. Um, one is using it for updates, simply kind of broadcasting news, which I think is a really interesting way of doing it. Um, so what they do is they pick three or four kind of news stories in the industry every day and they send that out via WhatsApp. That means that because it's a broadcast channel, people can't kind of reply publicly. So it is very much an alert system, which is working well. Um, and then I've also got another client who uses WhatsApp for um, customer service. So that's kind of less less like a broadcast channel. Um, and it's actually more of um, kind of one-on-one -on -one customer service um, queries. So they're using WhatsApp business for that. So yeah, there's some really interesting uses of WhatsApp around. And, you know, is, as we saw earlier, one of the world's favorite apps so it is certainly an interesting place to be active. Okay, so as always, thank you so much for being part of today's session. Thanks for your comments as well and for being engaged and involved. And I'm sure I will see you all very soon online. So enjoy the rest of your Thursday and take care and speak soon.